Hello students, in this situation I have decided to keep in touch with you through online lectures. I will post them on a regular basis and after the video you can contact me with your further questions or you can consult me with your ideas. I would appreciate any feedback from you. Uh, let's start with a new topic which will be Slovak state between years 1939 and 1945. Uh, and I've already posted the presentation and notes, so please you can print uh, the notes or you can write them down to your exercise books and you can study with the presentation. You can use this video for example just as an audio because I will just talk to this presentation like your normal lecture. Let's start finally. On the title, there is a poster to the movie, which is called The Message, or Sprava. And this is the movie that will probably will be released in autumn, I think. And it is about Verba and Wetzler, two Slovak Jews who escaped the concentration camp in Auschwitz. We will mention them in this presentation later on. One thing for the very beginning. Please call this just Slovak state and never Slovak Republic. It is very important for me to distinguish these two because Slovak state during the Second World War was basically a criminal state that is was not actually independent Slovak Republic at all. Okay, so Slovak state and not republic. The events after the betrayal. We will start just where we stopped before. So Munich betrayal or Munich conference. Soon after the argument, soon after the agreement with the uh, motto about us and without us, uh, there was a meeting in Vienna, another one, and it is called the first Vienna arbitration. Arbitration means that this is like the official process of settling an argument, uh, settling the agreement or disagreement by somebody who is not involved. These people who were basically not involved were Italy and Germany and it was about the territory of uh, Slovakia this first Vienna arbitration. Okay, so it's the process that basically other countries were deciding about our destiny once more. Uh, and during this, during this uh, agreement, during this first Vienna arbitration, the territory of Slovakia went to its neighbors, so divi they divided our territory to different countries, to our neighbors. For example, Hungary. They gained large territory in the south and Subcarpathian Rus. So this is the area that we already discussed it. Okay, so like all our southern border and also all of the Subcarpathian Rus. There were more than 800,000 people living and towns for example like Kosice as well. So not just uh, the territory that we're missing also today, but there was a huge part of Eastern Slovakia as well that was basically Hungarian territory now. Divin and Petržalka went to Germany because it was really close to Austria and Austria was annexed by Germany in Anschluss. Okay, so this was, this is the part that is very close to uh, Slovak-Austrian borders. So it went to Germany and Poland seized seven villages in Orava, Kisuce and Zamagurie. I will show you the map for the better understanding. Okay, so you can see uh, the Slovak part of Czechoslovakia, just focus on that part. And you can see the southern part that belonged to Hungary after. So all of the southern border, but not just some kind of thin space around it, but actually it was a huge part. 
and also subcarpathian rest to Poland you, you can't really um, see it but just really the bo uh, the on the border with Poland around uh, Orava and Zamagurie Kisuce as well and the only part that stayed for Slovak state was the yellow part so it's maybe just like one two thirds out of uh, our territory today okay let's go back this is about territory and first Vienna arbitration this is the very first uh, document the very first thing that is important for the beginning of the Slovak state the other important thing is declaring the autonomy of Slovakia and this happened on October the 6th 1938 in Zilina. okay so it happened just here in our city and you know this like northern part of Slovakia was usually the place where all these nationalistic autonomous groups started okay for example also Slovak national revivalists started around the area of Magdin and Liptovsky Mikuláš so Zelina was also center of these autonomous movements uh, the Slovak political parties under the leadership of Hlinka Slovak, um, Slovak People's Party so uh, HSLS it is in, in Slovak it is uh, better to use like the uh, Slovak abbreviation they declared the self-determination in Zilina it was from the balcony of Catholic House we will discuss these regional monuments and regional history in the end of uh, the Slovak state topic so just it's good to know now to that Julia was also important center of the autonomists so on October 6 1938 Hussle also with the other political parties under their leadership declared the self-determination and reached their goal but in fact uh, Hitler misused the Slavic demands against the Czechoslovak Republic okay so from the beginning there was nothing really bad in the idea to have autonomy so not to create the independent state but they just wanted to have autonomy we know that it's something different okay so autonomy you just want to decide about your your matters in some important matters but in fact you're still the same state okay so um, it was really okay from the beginning but it turned turned out to be uh, not so good because the Germany was still in the background decided about deciding about our our destiny just playing games soon the main political party Hasselhoff absorbed the other ones and we know that this is the first step towards the totality so the totalitarian regime because uh, the other parties they just kind of mixed and they blended together with Hasselhoff because they started to share their ideas and so on and this from the beginning in a sense step uh, resulted that the strongest political party started to prohibit the other ones so they were forbidden the Czechs for example who had been working in Slovakia for many many years were fired from their jobs and were supposed to go back home this was because as you remember after the creation of Czechoslovakia Slovakia had Slovakia lacked the teachers for example or the other intelligence because during the uh, Habsburg, Habsburgian uh, monarchy there was actually no intelligence so maybe only priests and more like just religious uh, intelligence we can say and not really normal occupations like doctors 
and so on because these people the more educated people mostly were Hungarians or, or Germans so after this the Czechs who helped us and during these uh, hard times who who helped us to they basically um, moved to Slovakia and they started to teach the next generation Slovaks were kind of mad about them that they took all the good jobs okay they wanted to send them home this was the sign of hate they started to hate the Czechs for having better positions in state but also in just normal occupations like their jobs are better and we are just working on them so this is why the, the Czechs were sent back home and Hutzelasse had great influence over the people the state of emergency started in Slovakia the Czechoslovak army controlled the Slovak territory and President Emil Hacha replaced Slovak Prime Minister Tiso for Karol Sidor. So Tiso from the very beginning was Prime Minister okay, during this period. So in the very end of the first Czechoslovak Republic. So he was Prime Minister just for the Slovak part. And Emil Hacha replaced him by Karol Sidor. So the state of emergency was something that responded to the aggressions that were happening also outside our our state and you know the times were really turbulent so the Czechoslovak army controlled the Slovak territory because they took also our autonomous movement as act of aggression because they took it that the state is about to split so that's it and on march 13th 1939 tisa was invited to berlin to discuss the future of slovakia with hitler you know germany was observing the our territory and what was happening there from the beginning even before the Munich agreement, the conference, and he planned to expand eastwards. We know that it was part of his plan. He wanted to occupy Bohemia and Moravia, and he saw opportunity to maybe even gain some ally from out of Slovakia. You know, uh, Hitler realized that it's not that the Germany is not able to just fight with everybody in the west in the east so he had planned to use this little argues between Czechs and Slovaks to let us decide and to just misuse it okay and he was successful actually because after he offered Tiso to create the independent well he said that the independent Slovak Republic uh, he had to do it immediately you know but the independence was only illusion and not real at all this is why this offering by Hitler is considered to be theory of minor evil this is very uh, very well known theory and it's used as somehow like uh, excuse for what happened during the Second World War on our territory like why we happen to be a puppet state and so on theory of minor evil it refers to the situation where you have two possibilities both of them are evil then you had just had to choose and you had no other option and you in the end maybe saved somebody so this is often really misused by these people who are excusing the Tiso and what he did so theory of minor evil it's important for you to explain it to me what it is okay why we call it like minor evil I think it was not minor evil at all because he just exchanged the elusive independence for 70 
thousand lives of Slovak citizens, not other ones, but even like our citizens, our own inhabitants. So on March 13th, this happened. So the Hitler and Tiso had a talk about defeat some possible destinies of our country and it was about to choose. The very next day, on March the 14th, 1939, the Slovak state with President Joseph Tiso was created. This state had the Calero fascist regime and was under the protection of Germany. So Tiso accepted the offer from Hitler. He created the Slovak state on March 14th, please remember this day, this date, and also to remember that it was just one day before that they, he had a talk with Hitler. Another thing is why we call this regime Calero fascist. Well, we call it like that because Joseph Tiso was a priest, Catholic priest, and the fascist regime in Slovakia was very connected to Catholic religion. Okay, so Christian Catholics were, we can say, the top group. In Germany, there was another kind of fascism or like national so socialism because we know that actually they used more of like old pagan, old like Nordic gods, not really Christianity. And it's very interesting that actually Christianity was misused there only because Joseph Tissa was a president that, you know, actually like fascism and Christianity has nothing to do together, right? Because Christianity is about forgiving, about humanity, about love and like good relations with other people, about morals. And fascism is connected to cruelty, mostly, and the horrors of the Second World War. Also, one day after the Slovak state was created, Wehrmacht, or the basically the army of Germany, invaded the Czech lands and created the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. The democratic Czechoslovakia ceased to exist after that. So it was March 15th, 1939. You know, things were happening really fast during this period. So we can see that only in three days there were negotiations. There was one new state created, Slovak state, and there was one state that actually stopped existing and became part of Germany. Because protectorate means that this land was taken by another one so it's not independent state at all okay it's just like something like a colony or you know like the controlled area by, by an army so things were happening really fast what we should remember is the Fiat Vienna arbitration what it is what happened what territory will lost after this arbitration to which countries? That on October the 6th, the autonomy was declared, the self-determination of uh, Slovak part of Czechoslovakia, it was declared in Zelina, and the Hlinka's Slovak People's Party became, after some time, the only political party because they absorbed the other ones, they started to publicly persecute the Czechs to send them back home and so there was the state of emergency because Czechoslovak army controlled the territory. Joseph Tiso was ch uh, changed uh, uh, as prime minister so the new Prime Minister became Carol Sider, he was replaced and after that Hitler 
misused everything that was happening here to his own plans. He invited Tiso to Germany where he offered him to create the independent Slovak state immediately. So Tiso accepted so-called theory of minor evil. You need to explain that. You need to explain me what is the clear of fascist regime and that the Slovak state was created on 14th of March 1939 and the next day the protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia was created as well. Czechoslovakia ceased to exist for the Second World War and it only started again after but it was never the same. Again, just check it on the map it's uh, better for you if you have their dates when the actual parts were taken. So the Czech parts were taken by the Munich Agreement and Slovak parts after the first Vienna arbitration. Here are two pictures. You can see the picture in the left is like a caricature so it's trying to capture the characteristics in like let's say amusing way and also to just ver very big characteristic in its meaning. So we can see the Prime Minister Joseph Tiso, well after some time President Joseph Tiso, who is like thinking and he has two Adolf Hitlers and they are just like two evil men who are offering him something. So none of them is good, none of them is angel. Because usually when the man is deciding, you, you know it from some uh, cartoons, that on about one shoulder there is angel and devil on the other side. But now you can see two parts of devil. This refers to the theory of minor evil. Please remember that I can give you that picture. So like what is captured in that caricature? The theory of minor evil. Okay, so remember it. Also study the pictures in the presentation. And on the right side, there is a poster of propaganda, which says we are united. Our goal is new Slovakia, your Slovak state, and these people are mostly, when you look at them, they are peasants, agricultural people, so you can see their, you can see like their equipment, and this refers to like our character of our nation, and they are taking this equipment like just uh, fighting weapons and they are also having their arm raised like actually fascist did and they are holding the, the flag of Hlinka Slovak People's Party well and Hlinka Guard that was after so they had this sign you can also see that one man has it on his arm but we will also mention that after. So this is part of propaganda and the, caric the, the other one is caricature about theory of minor evil. Okay, for today it will be everything for me. Uh, so please study this on a regular basis and uh, during the week I will post more videos uh, about select state so please just study from your presentation you can help yourself with this lecture so I can give you a spot check or I can examine you anytime so please study it really on regular basis it's your only job I will not give you some worksheets or something like that so this is like your only duty now to, to study about this and that's all. Please stay home, stay healthy, and bye.